I have no idea what to say, honestly. It's probably probably been about two or three weeks since I recorded anything. I think it's been like a month or so since I posted anything. Well, honestly, I think that I just got in my feelings. I got in my feelings too much. Um, Not just about my views, because of course the views that I have right now aren't that great. Um, but we'll get into that, that part later. But just about like trying to make sense of anything. Like I'm trying to figure out what in the world, even years from now, you guys could possibly need to hear from me or want to see from me. Um, or honestly, what can I look at myself in the eyes right now and tell myself that I haven't already told myself? Uh, and I could just be going through a bout of depression, honestly. Um, I'm also a human, so we want certain results. Like you want someone to view your video or comment on it. <laughs> and when they don't, you feel like, what am I doing this for? Like, I could just talk to myself in a car, but that is not what I was led to do. So I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to record videos and I'm going to post them. And the original goal was to post them no matter who watched them, because honestly, making these videos are therapeutic for me and um, it makes me happy. So it's about doing things that make me happy. As far as the titles go, I don't know what to call these videos because I'm really trying to stick to this AI I want to feel thing because I really do feel like artificial intelligence. I feel like every day there is a list of input and I'm supposed to do the output part, you know, like, and I'm sure I'm not the only person that feels that way, especially if you have like a job or you have a family. Um, or any other thing that you're responsible for or to, you're going to feel like that. So, well, you're not saying you have to, but you may feel like that. Um, it also could be that I'm super depressed because I have a family and I don't get any sleep. As you can see from my eyes, this is not from the devil's lettuce as much as I enjoy, um, partaking in the devil's lettuce. This is not from the, the, the devil's lettuce. This is from um children who want to talk to you and be up at all times of hours and they go to bed at 6 a.m like i'm not sure as to why or what they're looking for i don't know if these are just children of the night that i had or what but baby i'm tired <laughs> i'm extremely tired and the cogs and the wheels up here they're not really working or coming together at this point in time because i'm not feeling very inspired to do anything but sleep and I don't, I don't know what else to say, honestly. Um, so really I've had a million and one reasons as to why, um, I didn't record anything and why I was going to be like, you know what, maybe I shouldn't focus on that right now. Maybe I should focus on something different. Um, but I have one reason why I should do it. And the crazy part is the reason is why not? <laughs> Like, what's the worst that can happen? And I've been living a lot of my life in that way. I think that I will have more to talk about when I can be open with certain aspects of my life. But right now, since I'm working on those aspects, I find myself quiet in a lot of ways. Like, I don't really talk to my family or friends about certain things that I'm just trying to make plans for in my head, honestly, because there is a part of me that has done enough talking and she wants to act and she wants to be extremely impatient because she feels like she's earned her right to just step out into the world and make these magical things happen. Um, because I've been through, I've been through a lot of setbacks, a lot of setbacks. Um, I thought I was going to cry to y'all. No, nah, I'm not about to cry. <laughs> No, I'm just a little stuffy. But no, seriously, I have been through a lot of setbacks. I've been through a lot of things that made me say, like, why do you keep trying again? Um, but I'm really determined to make a life for myself in which I can look back when I get into that review period. And after you pass away, I, I whole, wholeheartedly believe that you have a chance to review your life and look back at how your decisions and um, actions uh, how they, I can't even think of the word. It's a simple word too. How they affected, how they affected others. 
and yourself. And I want to look back and be happy knowing that I used my God-given talents and abilities to create change in the world and help other people reach a point where they can see um, the beauty that's inside of themselves and the potential that they have. And um, in order to do that, I have to do that for myself first. And I've kind of fallen away from that. Self-love is one of the hardest, 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 hardest things for me. Because personally, once I get caught up in a rhythm or a groove, it only takes one thing. Like, it only takes one thing for me to stop loving on myself. Like, it can be like I'll suddenly just re think I'm taking up too much time, like, in the car talking. So I'll stop recording videos or exercise uh, my knees start to hurt and um i don't know i had to take too long to put the kids to bed so now both of those are really good reasons to just give up exercising for three months when all i had to do was ice my knee put the kids to bed and do some yoga or something you know what i mean so i'm trying really hard to stop leaning on excuses because i will be the only person responsible for my life when i pass and I want to leave behind some sort of legacy. Like, I want my kids to know that there are so many possibilities in life. And you don't have to ever feel trapped or choose one door or let your situation dictate who you are and who you shall remain. Um, and I also want to show them that it's super important to build yourself up. Like, you don't wait for other people to do it. Um, it's nice when other people come around and they want to help. But I want to show them what self-love looks like by actually putting it into action. And um, sometimes I have a hard time doing that because I am a giver and I like to serve others. And I like to make sure everyone else is okay and they have what they need. And um, honestly, what I'm learning mo most about myself is that's just a, um, is it called a ruse? It's a ruse. If that's not the right word, because mommy brain is real, y'all. I do have a kid. You, I had two, so I need a helmet now at this point. Because I honestly, I don't even know how I still have a brain. I'm so so much more clumsy and forgetful and whatever. See, I need. I shouldn't have went on this tangent because I don't even know where I was going with this. Mhm. Mm a ruse. Oh, helping people. Ha! Huh? Helping people has become sort of a disguise for me. Um, cause then if I'm helping others, I don't have to focus on myself. And, um, it's so much easier to do that because you can keep putting your stuff on the back burner because, uh, someone over there needed you or someone over there needed you. And I notice I do that a lot when it comes to my life. I'll let other people make the decisions so much so to the point where the other day I was journaling and, um, I have a whole bunch of different colored pens for when I journal. Um, so I didn't know what color I wanted to use. So I closed my eyes and reached my hand in the bag. And I was like, you know what universe, if, uh, just, just provide me with whatever color is going to make me feel the most inspired. And, um, I closed my eyes, reached my hand in the bag, pulled out a purple pen. And I was like, okay, cool. Cause I really like purple lately. Like I'm in my purple era. Don't know why, but I am. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to use this pen. And you know, something within me was like, just grab another and I was like, I'm not going to grab another pen. I, I, I asked for this pen, and this is the pen the universe gave me. Why wouldn't it work? But the smart thing to do is actually to grab another pen because these pens have been kind of getting to the point where they'll write really well, and all of a sudden they'll decide they don't want to write because I had them for a long time, and that's what they do. That's what pens do. So I ended up um, grabbing, closing my eyes, grabbing another pen, and that pen ended up being red. And I got super excited about this red pen. Like my heart kind of like jumped. Like I I felt like I hadn't written in red and it was gonna just feel so beautiful seeing that glide on the, onto the page. And I immediately talked myself out of using the red pen. I was like, no, the universe gave me purple first. And you know, purple is just gotta be what it is that I use because there is no way that that was a mistake. And I immediately felt like I was obligated to a purple pen, a pen. Like this is how much of my decision making um, power I've given away because I legit 
legit was going to to commit to to writing with that even though the pen the other pen made me feel better and i felt more inspired which is what i asked for when i reached into the bag um i just felt so much ready to write with that red one and i just felt something stand up in me and speak to me and whatever term you use you can use god you can use an angel uh you can use your spirit guides um i'm gonna say my higher self stood up and was just like no use the red pen excitement the excitement that you felt is a tool it is a tool to guide you into the direction of what is going to be the most natural for you you became excited about the pen it was provided to you so use it it's not about the first option all the time sometimes that's an available option but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what's best for you you have to start using your feelings as a compass for your life because right now you've leaned so heavily on, on analytical matters of the logic of things that you've lost your ability to innately and intuitively feel your way through situations. And it's causing you to lose your connection with spirit because spirit communicates with you intuitively. And then you can go back and use your logical processes to figure out how that will work for you and what you want that to look like. And I was just floored because it took a pen for me to realize that I give those decision making uh, processes away, that power away, because I don't want to be responsible if I make the wrong choice or if things don't turn out well. I always want something or someone else to fall back on if things don't go the way that I want for them to go. And that's crazy to me because how many times have I done that? If I've done it with something as small as what color I was going to use to write in my journal, I cannot imagine how many other things and opportunities um, and places and people I for, for go for went, whatever. I gave, I, I, I didn't give a chance to, or I didn't give a second glance to because it wasn't the first option that came after I said a prayer or, um, you know, they, they, I had to make a choice on my own. So I just didn't make one at all or whatever the case may be. And I realized a part of feeling and taking back my happiness and not that it has to be this battle or anything, but just a realization of the different ways in which I can possess so much power. And yet I choose not to, to use it. And for me, that was a crazy thing. It was a crazy thing. And so I've taken a while since then to look at different areas of my life in which I just feel like, okay, well, whatever happens, happens because I don't want to be responsible. How Whoever calls first, I'll just take that as a, a sign that this is the way to go instead of actually trusting myself. And that's what the big thing is, trusting that the decisions I make will land me in a place of happiness, joy, fulfillment, um, whatever it may be, I haven't trusted myself in a long time. And so this is what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to start just making decisions based off of how I feel. And I'm not talking about those sporadic feelings where you want to do something crazy because I have a lot of those, you know what I mean? I would be doing some really crazy things. I just mean those deep understandings of this is something I know will make me happy. This is something I know will help me grow. This is something that I know will further me on a path to my destiny. And I don't have to have a full picture of my destiny in order to understand what it is that um, is aligned with it. Oh, what's that? Oh, my eyes. So yeah, that's pretty much been my lesson why I've been quiet this whole time. Because I'm looking around at all the ways in which I gave away power. And then I look at how powerless I feel at times. And I have to realize that that's a choice that I made. And that's wild to me. That is wild to me. So if you are a person who doesn't necessarily like to make decisions in life and you kind of throw caution into the wind and say, oh, well, whatever comes of it, comes of it, because then I'm, you know, then I can just go with whatever's best based off what's presented to me. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, I want you to really take time in each decision you make today, whether it's what type of food you eat, um, how you wear your hair, um, where you work at, what kind of car you drive, 
um, the goals you have for the next five years in your life. I want you to look at all of these things and see if they, there is anything set in place. And if there is something set in place, I want for you to figure out if you are allowing others to influence your decision or make that decision for you so that you don't have to be responsible or if you are fully standing up and accepting responsibility for the choices that you make for your life. Um, that is super important. And I have been so scared to do it for so long because sometimes certain choices can make you look like the bad guy or like I said, they can fall through and now it's all your fault and you have nobody to lean on or to, to, um, to blame. But honestly, it's your life. And when things go well, you want credit for that. So why not be able to accept that accountability and that responsibility when things don't necessarily go the way you think they should go? Um, if you want to grow with me and we can figure out this thing called life together, uh, take the time to do that. I mean, it doesn't have to be like a big life-changing naked on the mountain experience where you color your hair and change your name to something spiritual. Um, it can just be in the slightest of ways. Just realizing why you make certain decisions, no matter how small, is super important in figuring out what it is that truly makes you happy. So if you have time today or tomorrow or any time after watching this video, just check in with yourself and see because I promise you it'll be eye-opening in some sort of way. And again, I'm about to be late for therapy because this is when I record these videos. So let me get out and make another decision for my life to go talk to someone who's going to help me stay mentally sane. <laughs> you guys have an excellent day. Thank you for hearing me out. And if I'm just talking to myself, thank you for hearing me out, girl, because even if nobody else listens, you do. Um, you guys have a wonderful day again, and I'll talk to you soon.